Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture actually I will prove some of the basic properties of groups. So, we were actually seeing some concrete examples of uh, groups and uh, uh, subgroups, okay. But it is also important to learn how to approach this group theory abstractly. So, that is why I would like to prove some of the basic properties of groups in this lecture, okay. So, let us start with uh, <coughs> a group G. So, that means group actually comes with this binary operation star. So, this we take it as a group. So, recall that. So, this star is actually a binary operation. So, that means it is a map from G cross G to G. So, it is a function. So, what we did given A B we actually associated some element inside G we called it A star B okay. So, since uh, we are actually I want you to get familiar with the abstraction. So, whenever I say group we will actually start ignoring this notation star in what follows next okay. So, for example, so we just assume star is there. and then start writing A B instead of A star B okay. And I also want to introduce uh, some notation. So, we denote E by the identity element okay. So, I already told you the identity element is unique. So, in this lecture I will prove it is unique, but anyway it is not that hard exercise. So, this is identity element of G and given A in G the inverse of A. So, I also told you that uh, inverse of any element is also unique. So, the inverse of A is denoted by a inverse okay. So, these are all the standard notation that we use. So, this one and this one okay. So, let us start with uh, the identity element okay. Let us try to prove its uniqueness okay. The identity element is unique. So, that is the fact one identity element of G is unique okay. So, what is the meaning of that? So, that means if you have two elements of the group G that satisfy the property of the identity element identity element then those two elements must be unique. So, let us call E and E dash. So, they are the identity elements okay. So, that means they satisfy the property of identity elements. So, what is it? For example, A E and E A should be A for all A in G. So, this is the property of the identity element and the same thing should be true for E dash as well. So, A E dash E dash A should be equal to A for all A in G. So, now note that I can take simply uh, so, this you call it equation 1 and then this you call it equation 2. So, if we take A equal to E dash in the first equation in the equation 1. So, then we get E dash E equal to E E dash equal to E dash okay. And if we take a equal to E in the second equation. So, then we get the following E E dash equal to E dash E equal to E okay. So, now if you put them together. So, for example, E E dash is appearing both places. So, E E dash one hand you are getting E dash 
on the other hand you are getting g so because these two are must be same so that comes from the definition of the function so given e e dash then that uh, element that is associated with e e dash okay so that must be unique so that tells you that so this e dash must be equal to e so this proves if you have identity elements okay two identity they must be same so that means the identity element of g is unique okay so similarly one can prove actually the inverse element of uh, inverse of any element must be unique so this is i will again prove so this is the abstraction that you start appreciating okay so you start with an element a in g so what we want to say we want to say that there exists unique inverse for this element a so let us say there are two elements b1 b2 in in g such that both are inverse so that means a b1 and b1 a must be equal to identity and similarly a b2 and then b2 a must be equal to identity so this is what you have okay so now what we want to prove so we want to prove that b1 and b2 both are equal so this is exactly like cancellation okay so basically you want to say that if you have equation something like this in a group you will be able to do cancellation okay so now let's see how one can prove this so we have to use property of the identity element as well so you know that b1 is same as b1 identity okay but identity is same as b1 a or b2 a okay so basically you start with b1 and then you say that that b1 is same as b2 by introducing this new elements in between so you have b1 e so let us try doing that so you have this identity for example what i can do i can substitute instead of identity i can substitute for example this a b2 okay so then b1 identity will becomes b1 a b2 okay so now you can see that this b1 a which is again identity so then i can replace this b1 a by identity and then i will get b2 but e times any element is itself so then you get b2 so just rewriting b1 equal to b1 identity and then substituting identity as b1 a you see that b you can actually go with this uh, argument and then show that b1 equal to b2 so that means given a there exists unique b in g such that a b equal to b a equal to identity so that unique element we denote it by a inverse okay so that is how we introduce this notation so because both identity and the inverse they are unique so i will be we are comfortable in this introducing this okay <coughs> so like i was telling about this cancellation that can be done in the group okay so let us just formulate it uh, more mathematically and then prove it so this is the fact 3 which is again very useful fact that you can actually uh, use uh, left and right about groups so because we can actually talk about inverse element for each element okay so i will be able to actually cancel uh, any element if it is in the some equation like this so what i mean by that let us say you have a b1 equal to a b2 for some a b1 b2 inside g so you have some equation like this okay sometimes you will have equation like ax equal to b minus that kind of uh, linear equation you must have seen so similar to that we have this equation now we don't know like what this group or what this uh, a b is and all okay 
but we are saying that there is such equation abstractly ok. So, then what I want to say if this is happens, so then so because A has inverse I will be able to multiply by the inverse of A on the left side. Uh, so, that would actually imply that B1 must be equal to B2. So, I am allowed to cancel A and then get B1 equal to B2. So, do not do anything crazy like this. So, you, you are not allowed to subtract something like this ok. So, this is not allowed. So, let me just write it completely. So, this is what you do when you see linear equation, eh? but this is not happening here in the group ok, because we have only one operation that is called the star. So, by abuse of notation we are just writing instead of A star B1 we are writing A B1 ok. So, there is no meaning of subtracting A B1 minus A B2 and so on ok and then you cannot take A out like B1 minus B2 equal to 0 and then cancel A. So, that is those things are not allowed, but how do you make sense, but still we are saying that B1 must be equal to B2. So, how one can prove this ok in the group setting let us see here. So, here is the proof. So, you start with this equation A B1 equal to A B2. So, that means what we are saying if you take A comma B1 the image of that is same as A comma B2 under this star map ok. So, now what I can do this is one element this is one element that inside the group G. So, I will be able to actually take A inverse and then apply ok or I can do the multiplication with A inverse. So, I say multiplication, but I what I mean is binary operation that we perform on the group ok. So, we just abstractly talking about something multiplication, so not the usual multiplication ok. So, you just take A inverse and then apply it on on the left side. So, then what do you know? So, this has to be equal to A inverse that you apply it on A B 2. So, this you can do just because the star is a function basically. So, this element is the image of A inverse comma A B 1. So, that this is the image of that ok. On the other side you have A inverse comma A B 2. So, since A B 1 is same as A B 2 and these two tuples are same ok. This is same as A inverse A B 2. So, the images of these two must be same. So, what is the image? So, that is like star of A inverse comma A B 1 that should be same as star of A inverse comma A B 2. So, the images should be same. So, that is what we just call it A inverse a B 1 and then here A inverse A B 2 ok. So, now you have this element, but you have what is called associativity. So, this is same as A inverse A and then B 1. Similarly, this is same as A inverse A B 2, but when you take A inverse times A you know that that is already identity. So, this becomes identity times B 1. Similarly, this becomes identity times B2, ok. But identity times any element is itself. So, here you get B2 and here you get B1. So, this proves that B1 must be equal to B2. So, I am allowed to do cancellation, ok. But when I say cancellation, not cancellation like this, ok. So, this is not what I mean. So, so, here I can multiply by A inverse on left side. So, I am able to do the cancellation. So, similarly one can do what is called right cancellation. So, if we have equation like this B1 A equal to B2 A and for all sorry for some A B1 B2 in G. So, then what we get? So, then we get that 
b1 must be equal to b2. So, again how the argument goes it is very similar to what we did before. So, the proof is just one line you take b1 a and then multiply with a inverse. So, then you get b1 on the left hand side on the right hand side you get b2 a and then you multiply with a inverse. So, then you get b2 because this a inverse becomes identity. So, you get b1 equal to b2. So, when you are doing it for first time I would recommend not to miss any steps better you just go through step by step and then see what properties of groups that you are using to justify each and every step ok. So, this is uh, something about uh, the cancellation. So, now uh, let us try to understand this associativity. So, I already explained uh, the consequence of associativity in the very first lecture when I introduced this uh, uh, set of all moves on the given Rubik's cube ok. So, that is something I want to again emphasize here in very abstract sense what it means. So, recall so what is the associativity. So, associativity says if you given 3 elements a b c inside g. So, we can actually perform 2 different possible products ok. One is I can first multiply a b and then multiply c ok and then I can multiply first b c and then multiply a. So, what I mean by this I simply take consider the images ok. So, you take star of first a comma b and then take star of star of a comma b comma c ok. This is the element that is there on the left side, but if you think about it what is on the right side it is star of a comma star of b comma c. So, I am denoting ok the star is a function from g cross g to g na. So, given a b I am denoting star of a comma b by the image. We also used that a star b, but I want to just use star of a comma b. This is the traditional notation. Huh? For example, if I call it this f ok star as f then what is a comma b image? It is f of a comma b ok that is why I want to write it like this. So, but uh, once you are very comfortable with uh, we are talking about abstract binary operation then you can just simply suppress the notation and write it as a b ok. So, that is why you so, but you can see that so, this is first you are taking some image of a b and then considering image of this image of a b comma c. So, that could be very much very different from what is on the right side ok. So, so, in that case there is no guarantee that these two products need to be same, but in group theory in groups we are actually demanding that these two are same because many many examples that we know for example, matrix multiplication addition all of them satisfy this associativity law. So, that is why we demand this to be true ok. okay. So, now <coughs> let us start with 3 elements a b c d inside g. So, then you can see that now there are more possibilities of taking this successive brackets ok or the products between these elements. So, the order that we do not change the a b c d remains same, but the way you actually kind of perform like there are like the brackets you can adjust and then there are many ways actually you can actually take the product. So, what I mean by that for example, I can first multiply a b and then multiply c d ok and then take this product ok. You take this one and then this one and then take product between them. So, that is allowed thing na? ok and then you can also do something like this I can keep a as it is and then I can multiply C D first and then B C D next and then I can multiply with A with this 
okay so but what do we want to say it doesn't matter how you actually group them okay once you fix the order this a b c d so then these elements will be same in the group okay so <coughs> i will leave it as exercise to think about how many possible brackets that you can actually or how many ways you can actually get elements uh, from the given this a b c d okay so you fix this a b c d in g so now to so not exactly in g what i'm talking about the number of possible groups that you can make okay so find out how many possible grouping okay we can do for example so this a b c d so this is one grouping and then a b c d is another grouping and similarly a b c and then d another grouping okay like that you can perform many many grouping i want you to find out how many are possible <coughs> and given a of course once you are done with uh, four elements you can also try to do it for five elements and so on and it is not that hard to actually find out a formula uh, for any given finite number of list of elements so what i mean by list of elements you fix some order so like a1 a2 etc an and then we can actually talk about possible like grouping like this okay so i will actually include that in the problem sheet you may you, you may think about it but what is interesting okay fact so once you assume this associativity okay so then you can actually convince yourself that these two elements for example they will be same inside the group okay it doesn't matter the order in which you group the elements so as long as uh, you fix the original order like a b c d okay the way you group doesn't matter so you still at the end you will be getting the same element so that is because of associativity so this can be proved <coughs> using induction okay and then uh, induction on the number of uh, elements that actually uh, appear okay so <coughs> maybe later uh, i will actually discuss about this uh, but for four it is very clear like what i'm talking about so let us do this small examples and then see uh, and then uh, we will get to some idea what to do with the general case okay so let us consider this a b and then c d so one possible bracket i said you can do something like this okay so but the thing is this b c d like it doesn't matter the the way in which you bracket them okay they are same na for example this tells immediately that so if i group them in some other order like a b c and then d so since this b c d this element that i have written here is same as this element so again you are bracketing with a so it tells you that these two are actually same okay so now what happens so now you see that this is same as so so what we wanted to do like uh, yeah so maybe like we will verify that these two are same so grouping a b c d and then this a b c d so those two are same so how do i do that so again you start with uh, for example the left side so a b c d okay so this you can now think as one element c d so that is like x okay 
So for example, I call this as x. So then this becomes a b x. So this this is what this x. So now using associativity, you can see that this is same as a b x. Okay, that is what associativity tells. So that means this is same as a b c d. Okay, because c d is your x. So this c d is your x. So that tells you that this element is same as this element. So this is something uh, we verified. So this is how you verify actually for all other elements. But writing down the proof is actually a bit technical. It uses induction. It is not that hard. One should learn how to write down the proof as well. Okay. So maybe I will do in one of the problem solving section. So you can actually convince yourself that all these elements are same. Okay. So convince yourself all the elements that you get are same for just length 4 okay for length 4. So that means only given a b c d so you will you are considering all possible brackets like this now but it does not matter which bracket you take still you will be getting same element that is what I am saying. So that unique element okay so that is denoted by just a b c d okay because the way that we group them does not matter. So you just write them as a b c d okay. So in general what we do in general given a 1 etcetera some a n inside g. So you write a 1 product etcetera a n okay. So or we can also use this notation but this arrow matters a lot. So because the product is taken in very specific order. So that is what this arrow means. So this this is actually a symbol for product okay. This is just symbol for product and when we put arrow like this then this means the order in which the product is taken matters okay. So then you can say this is just a. So basically product you can put ai and then just i range from 1 to n. So either you denote it by this or denote it by this not a problem okay. So this is what associativity actually guarantees us. Okay, so yeah, so these are the some basic properties that I wanted to discuss today. So I will uh, stop here and then I will continue with uh, more uh, properties in the next lecture. Thank you.